Any other Americans in the group? Don't be afraid to raise your hands. No? I've heard a little bit of Snowden, a little bit of NSA. I've heard a lot of Trump. And candidly speaking, as you guys were talking before me, great group of speakers, I was pacing back and forth trying to figure out, how do I work in Harvey Weinstein into this conversation? So I opted not to do that, by the way. Probably not a good thing. Um, so any Infoblox users here, any Infoblox customers? Anyone know what Infoblox does? I feel like we're like the best kept <laughs> secret. So when I think about like what we're going to be presenting, the CrowdStrike guy said a phrase um, that I really liked. He summarized and he said, if you want to know how to secure your environment one good way, understand what's going on on your network. Get that data from your network and it'll create a very nice picture of what's happening with your security posture. That's really what we're going to talk about today. Um, Infoblox, we deliver a set of core protocols that integrate DNS, DHCP, IP address management. There's a saying in America, it's like there are gold in those hills. I mean, there's so much data, and that's what we're really going to talk about is how do you leverage that data across your entire environment uh, to create a better security posture. So before I do that, before I go down kind of the path of Infoblox, and this is a vendor slide. Someone said I'm not a vendor. We're definitely a vendor. These slides that we were given, some salesy stuff in it. I'm going to try to take a step back and make it very general. But uh, we would not be a vendor if we didn't have a few sales slides in here. So before I talk about Infoblox, let's talk about the things that we're seeing. I don't think any of this is going to surprise you, right? So obviously, from, a, from an active user perspective, the number of people that are going on net, it's staggering when you look at the growth, right? I, I think the people is, is less of the issue, more of the issue for, for us is, and especially the IT leaders, is how do you create an environment to support those users? Think of all the changes that have to happen from a networking perspective. Think of the apps. Think of all the things that we need to run our business, personal, professional. There's a lot of infrastructure that has to go around that. Anyone here have three or more children? I do. I don't know why I'm surprised that the number of devices just keep, I mean, if you, I've got four kids. If you look at my family, I've got an embarrassingly high number of devices on my network, right? So again, from a connected devices standpoint, continuing to grow. For IT, we have to, you know, my son, my oldest son, he's entering the workforce. He can't imagine a world where his work environment and that user-rich environment of devices and applications, that, that doesn't translate to the workforce. And as hiring managers, we have to compete for that talent. IT leaders, you've got to create an environment that supports that. Obviously, as, as that happens, as we adopt more cloud, more SDN, uh, and the networks evolve, so do the threats. You guys have spoken a lot about that today, no secret. Digital transformation, it's happening. It means a lot of things to, or different things to different people, but I mean, it's happening. And we'll talk a little bit about that as well. And then no slide would be complete without the Internet of Things slide. The interesting thing for me is the AI software going on the IoT devices. That's actually very exciting for me. So, like anything, like GDPR, you've got this trend and then you've got solutions to support that uh, to help uh, mitigate the risks. Same here, right? So from a trend perspective, organizations need to support all the initiatives that we just talked about. So when you think of rolling out next generation networks, next gen data centers, it's stuff that you guys live with every day. SDN, I mean, it's very complex. You guys have to deal with a lot. Cloud adoption is continuing to happen. Cloud means a lot of things to a lot of people. Could be private cloud public cloud, hybrid cloud, doesn't matter, right? Containers in the cloud gets a little bit more complex, but there's a journey that customers are going on. Our customers are going on it. You guys are going on it in some form or fashion at some point, right? Obviously, the IoT, for us, IoT is, it's an IP addressable device on the network. I've heard monitoring and management and securing devices. I also heard one of the gentlemen, I can't remember who it was, said, if you don't know what's on the network, how can you monitor it and manage it and secure it? And I think that's a key phrase for us. So when we think of IoT in our world, we just think of devices on the network that you got to build a program around. And you need to be able to identify them and then build policies and secure them. And I don't need to say anything else. You guys have been talking about this all day, right? It's security everywhere. And then the move to digital. Digital is happening. I mean, it's, a, it's an interesting concept for me. I mean, depending on what line of business you're in and what industry, it could be connecting partners and suppliers to your back-end systems. It could be, I've got all of these locations around the world and I need to connect all of my users with this great experience. And they need to have access to all the same documentation and the videos and just whatever you need to be collaborative regardless of where your geography is. 
You need a powerful network to then support it, right? And then automation and machine learning. We talked a lot about that today. Um, it's, it's evolving. For us, it means something important. It means about understanding what's different on the network. How do we create automation between the systems that you've already spent money on? How do we create uh, uh, this world of connectivity of the devices where they're sharing information between systems? Now, this one's got a little timing issue, so this is going to forward. I'm going to have to rewind it. But f for us, the challenge becomes, there it is. The next, uh, malware today is very smart. It's sandbox aware. Like, it knows when you're on network protected by corporate controls and when you're in Starbucks and you're not. And it'll act accordingly. It'll go quiet, then it'll pop back up. Right? And typical security controls, when you think of firewalls and IDS, IPS, think of antivirus, they're all important. They're all part of the defense in depth layer. But what we talk about, and most times we talk about one of two things around security and DNS. One is it's a, an awareness that you actually have an issue here, right? Maybe you haven't thought about it. So we try to bring that to light. Or the second piece is this um, idea of I've got firewalls, I've got IDS, I've got content filtering, I'm covered. Well, we cover that time and time again. And so there's this gap in awareness, and, and it's a major gap. Like, what's the issue? I'm going to just let this build out. Sitting in the back earlier, I know you guys aren't going to be able to see this very well, so I'm going to summarize it. Um, DNS is an important threat vector. It's tied for number one or number two. If you don't have a DNS security strategy, you need one. 78% um, of most application layer attacks happen over DNS. DNS vulnerabilities are compromising the infrastructure. DNS is the leading culprit of data exfiltration. I've got a sales team in the back. I can't tell you how many times we've sat in front of customers. And they said, no, no, I'm covered. I've got X technology. You can't exfiltrate data. And we do it right there in front of them. We show them. It's an issue. 91% uh, of malware uses DNS to get out and go to its command and control sites, get its payloads, do its thing. It may not come in through DNS, but 91% of it's using DNS to come out of there. So having a system in place within that core infrastructure. All right, firewalls are great. IDS are great. IPS, fantastic. The challenge is of where they sit in the network. Right? Having a strategy where you can catch it at that protocol serving layer, super critical. And then the integration of the threats intelligence data. I've heard threat intelligence data a lot today. Very, very important. Incorporating those known bad domains, known bad actors into your security infrastructure, your firewalls, your IDS, into your security operations team. It's very, very critical. So that's the threat, right? You know that? No vendor would be complete without a, uh, a sell you slide. This is it. So I'm just going to take a step back and just be very, very general and try not to talk about it in Infoblox terms, but talk about it in what we're seeing and what we're doing as an organization. And these are what our customers are consuming. I mean, we've got 8,500 customers. We're 52% of the market share. What we found the most value is taking those protocols and those services at that core networking layer and integrating them bringing DNS and DHCP and IP address management and bringing that under one common view so you can drive automation, security, and control at that core protocol level. Because that's where all the magic is happening. And once you can do that, then you can move into all those initiatives we talked about, next-gen networking, data centers, all of that stuff. If you've got this core networking piece, it makes digital transformation easy. It makes that move to the cloud much more seamless in terms of security and visibility and IP address allocation with your private clouds. How do you spin up, spin down VMs and get them on the DNS? You know, so all that piece becomes much easier. Then you can protect against it. Once you've got that visibility across the network, then you can put controls in to protect against internal and external based DNS vulnerabilities. Again, it's like the number, I think it's the number one, number two threat vector. I mean, it's out there. And then what we do, which is a little bit differently, which I think is, is where we're going with two things, really. One is the behavior analytics. We talked about machine learning in our world. It's how do you look at those indications of compromise, those indicators, those things that are just not normal, and how do you catch them? Data exfiltration is a big thing. That's how we do it. Right? And then secondly, we've got crown jewels of your network. Now, we know every user that's on the network, and we know where they're going, and we've got the DHCP, the fingerprint, the lease information, all the IP address, extensible attributes. Wouldn't your firewalls like to have that? Your IDS, your IPS, your SIM, your scanning? 
right? And that's the stuff that we're doing is we're, we're, we're creating those APIs that lets that flow of information share with the other investments that you've made in your environment to drive automation, to drive uh, just a much more rich experience in terms of how we detect and prevent vulnerabilities. So this is how we package it. So I'm gonna double click on this one to go in individually, but when we look at the world, we, we, we bring from a security perspective, again, we're very specific. We look at infrastructure, right? It's about the five nines of availability across your environment. We looked at, look at protecting your data and your users regardless of where they are. And then all of that infrastructure you put in place from a security operations perspective, all the people and the tools and all the technologies and all the alerts and correlation and deduplication, we try to make that better. Outside of Infoblox, and again, making this very general, one of the key tenants is just visibility. You, one of the questions I ask CISOs all the time is if you have an issue on your network, how easy is it for you to know what's on your network at any one point in time? It's a struggle. Right? And if I were to ask any of you, how easy, if you could go right now and tell me everything 100% what's on your network, would you be able to do it? It's tough, it's very, very hard. So being able to have that complete visibility at any point in time on what's on the network. And then someone mentioned, I think the previous slide, he mentioned configuration management. Well, Amazon, a year ago, one keystroke error Manual configuration, one error, four hour downtime, cost them $150 million. So it's one thing to know the infrastructure and what's out there, but if you're gonna protect it, putting in an automated, just a, a very robust change of configuration management platform. One that makes sure that everything's hardened, it's automated, it's not manual, you remove all of those manual processes. And then once you do that, then you can detect what's going on in those devices from a security perspective. Again, think infrastructure, right? Um, protecting against uh, DNS DDoS attacks. Um, you can see the DNS hijacking. Those things are, uh, we see them every day, right? Super critical. And then we talked about the data enrichment, that ecosystem. That's a consistent theme across what we do because we collect so much information and our customers have spent so much money finding systems that then can share that via APIs to make those systems better and smarter. I think we were having a conversation with someone today and the comment was, I struggle with the staff because I bring these in my security operations center, I bring them on, I train them, and then someone pays them three times as much and takes them away from me. So I need efficiencies through there, and that's what that ecosystem, that data enrichment, whatever solutions you bring into play, they need to be able to talk to one another. So from an, that's an infrastructure perspective. And then from a data protection and malware mitigation, for us, this is protecting data and users. Doesn't matter where you are. On the network, off the network, cloud-based, on-prem, Right, just making sure that you can detect those uh, indicators of compromise from a data exfiltration standpoint. You can identify not only what malware is running in your environment, but you could stop it. And you can create automation with things like scanners and network access control systems. Right? We're not a NAC provider, but we integrate with them. So the moment we see an infected machine, we can trigger workload to the uh, network access control provider to then go take action on that machine. Right? So that, less about Infoblox, more about as you build out that environment, that's the type of thinking, that's what's happening in the industry, that's creating a, le a level of automation that um, I just haven't seen before, frankly. I've had CISOs tell me, I'll give you three of your functionalities back, you give me one integration to a system that I have. That's important to me and that's what we started doing. And then again, this constant theme of visibility. You have to know what's on the network at any one point in time to be able to build controls around it. And then this one's an interesting one because, uh, candidly speaking, up until about a year ago, we didn't really talk about the threat containment. We didn't talk about the SOC. Think about the incident response. And, and so that's where we're focusing. We acquired a company about a year and a half ago that is a security organization, and they put out threats and intelligence feeds, threat vulnerability data, right? And so with that coupled with other, like Serbal, some of the new, new uh, technologies and approaches that are out there, being able to incorporate that Right, that, that's the wrap it up one, John? All right. Um, so creating automation through the Security Operations Center, right? You guys have expensive people. You've got a lot of technologies. How do we kind of condense that down? So uh, I'm going to wrap it up. This is very much a marketing slide. So again, th these are some of our ecosystem partners. Again, I think with any provider you look at, that conversation of who do you integrate with, who can you drive automation through, where do you have APIs, that's just a big question. Uh, that you should be asking, right? Because that's the important part. That automation is, is, I think, what a lot of people are missing. That's definitely a marketing slide. I'm gonna click through that one. I got the red card. That's all I have. Any questions?
Yes. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.